What's up guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today we're going to be checking out Goblins of Elderstone. You might recall that this game actually made an appearance on my channel a while back. That was back when they first had like their first little demo that they were showing off to people. This time around, they've got themselves a fully fledged Steam release. So you and I are going to hang out for a little bit and I think we're going to have a good time with this one. Let's jump straight on in and play the game. We've got a new game. I find that the game is the most satisfying when you go with the mythology of your tribe by making story choices. Otherwise, you can just pick your gods if you want. Or you can have a completely random goblin society. They might be evil, they might be neutral, they might be good, they might worship money, you never know. Let's go with the story. Ruby Eye, first goblin, look out over Elderstone from Mountaintop. Her eyes fill with wonder as her heart fill with battle. What be the goblin way, she asked the wind, the rock, and the running water. How will Goblin live and breathe through the unseen tomorrows of Elderstone? Ruby, I hear Elderstone's answer, an echo and rustling of leaves. She strained to make it out. What do Ruby, I hear? I think we're going to be good guy goblins. Ruby, I look to Warjoy and ask, what path I take? Warjoy say, listen to gods and choose one as your guide. That god will lead you down the most sacred path, always forwards and never back. So Ruby, I think loud inside her own head. Gods hear me, which path lead me, lead all goblin to where we want to be. Her head filled with voices and Ruby Eye listened to the gods within her skull. We will be goblins for, ooh, I don't know, we can make polished copper, we can be about money, we can be about faith, or we can be about war. Let's be about faith. I find that a society where you've got them nice and wrapped into a state religion tends to work the best for me staying in control. Sorefoot Ruby Eye, look with wonder at lake that float in air like cloud. From lake, tumble waterfalls down to ground. Warjoy bathe in waterfalls as mist wet Ruby Eye's face, dampen her cheeks. Ruby Eye feel lie down sad and jumping happy all at once. Are you Lake of Tears? She asks. The lake answer in voice of thundering waterfall and trickling stream. I am. The tears of sorrow, the tears of joy, the tears of wonder. Drink in my tears and you will wash away the clay and you shall bear mysteries beneath. When the faces of gods grew out of three waterfalls, fell before Ruby Eye. We can be about the divine, we can be about nature, or we can be about the arcane. I'm going to be about the divine. We already took religion as our main focus, so that sounds good. Most gone, silence everywhere as Ruby I walk through ash of blackened hills and stop at shattered gate of broken citadel. The air smell like death. Skeletons lie scattered on ground, blackened as hills and broken as citadel. Goblin skeletons. Who do this, Ruby I wail to gods? Who take children from me? Skull begin to clack, jaws move. Ruby Eye listen close to gods as the skulls whisper at her through baked bone. Now we can have, this is choosing our enemy. Dwarves, orcs, elves. Let's go with humans. I feel like humans are, even though we're good guys, I feel like they're the most likely to mess with us and try to murder us. Humans have a problem like that. We really sincerely do. And so there it is. These are your chosen gods. Click on each one to see the magic, technology, and bonuses they will give you. We've got Iron Snout. A god of war whose alignment is good. Our enemy is orcs, and we have arcane magics. We also have Roundhead, who is a neutral trade god with arcane magic, an enemy of orcs, and access to money bags. We get 10 gold every season, and then we get the war forge when we go with Warjoy. The rest of the stuff hasn't been implemented yet, so we'll just have to we'll have to not have that and make do with what we have for right now. I'm not a greedy man. My goblins can be equipped about as well as they need to be equipped, that's fine. Let's do this thing. We gotta pick a starting spot here. I like foresty areas that are not super dangerous and try to murder me. So I'm gonna go with a large map. And let's find a nice little spot in here where we feel like we can get some of the goodies that we wanna have. That's not a bad spot right there, actually. That's a pretty good spot. I like that spot. That spot is also pretty good, but we're gonna get attacked a lot. So it kinda comes down to what you wanna do. I think that sounds about the best right there. It's not gonna be named Gobleton. It's got to be called, I don't know, we got to come up with a better name for this. We'll call it Gobblebrook. There we go, it's Gobblebrook, because that's the sound that the brook makes when the goblins hear it, and then also they are goblins, so it's Gobblebrook. we got to pick people. I would suggest you go with people that have high respect. I don't know how respect ties into the game, but I would prefer it for my peons, I mean my citizens, my voting members of the public to have a healthy respect for me. I think that sounds pretty good. We've got some females, we've got some males, we've got a pretty good split right there. And our respect levels are looking really solid. We also need to change our banner because obviously this is not the banner of Splattercat. I like that one and then what kind of animals do we have on here? Do we have like a boar or anything like that? We got a dog. That'll work. I like dogs. Dogs are pretty, there's a little moo cow right there too. 
Kind of depends what you want to go with. And then our tribe color will be yellow. I love green and yellow together. They look so good. They look so good. Uh, I don't need tutorials. I think I'm good there. I'm going to turn that off. I think we should be able to make it. Oh, we get to choose our starting resources? Really? That's new. Uh, maybe I don't. All right, let's start this thing off and see what glorious bounties that Warjoy will bestow upon us when we decide to bring beautiful battle against our foes. We want to spot... What is that right there? What is that thing? I don't know what it is. A campfire, and it is surrounded by wolves. I think I just put down my thing on accident right there. I was trying to figure out what that is, but... I guess I can live with it. We're right next to stone. We're right next to wood. The first thing that we're going to need is we need a grand hall, and we need a chieftain's hut. So I would suggest we get the Grand Hall. It's a home for 10 goblins, including the king and the chief. So that works out right there. Let's uh, chief it on up a little bit. And there it is. I feel like our achievements are super sturdy. They will get to work and start building that. And in fact, we can speed up the game to make that happen. Your goblins are mostly automated. They'll do whatever they're supposed to be doing at any given time. If they need more wood, they will go get more wood. If they need more stone, they will go get that too. I like the way the game is automated, and I don't really have to set up work orders or anything like that. However, if you like to control everything and carefully ration out what everybody does, you can do that. No problem. I think our campfire is inside this big stone over here. That worries me a little bit, but like... Hmm. Yeah, our campfire is inside of that stone. I don't know if they can interact with it or not. I would like for them to interact with it, but... As of right now, it's a backwards question mark. That or like a pirate's hook. I don't know, maybe we're pirate goblins. Yar. We be pirate goblins, uh, sailing the high seas, searching for the whales and fighting and taking the gold. That was my best. That was my best pirate goblin voice right there. That was the best that I had for you. I didn't really have anything else. I would have preferred for the campfire to be over here, but I didn't realize it was on my clicker. So, it's underneath a building right now. The first of many of my terrible design decisions has been bequeathed upon the people. Of my colony. The next thing we're going to need is we need like a storage yard. So we've got a trade hall right there. I don't think a trade hall is what I'm looking for. Crafting hut's not what I'm looking for. Lumber mill? No. Maybe it's a main building. There we go. So there's our storage hut. I'm going to put it right there. Ooh, it's got like a little archway. That's pretty sweet. I'm going to put that right there. That's a place where they could take all of our resources and our supplies and just keep them in a centralized location. So chances are what you want to do here is you want all your crafting buildings to come off of this if you want them to be extra efficient and able to get after the things that they want to have. Other things that are pretty important to build. Um, you should definitely, the tutorial never tells you this, but you should totally build yourself a well. If you don't, you will regret it. The tutorial never tells you to build a well. But trust me, your city will burn down if you don't build a well. The tutorial tells you to build all kinds of stuff, and a well is never brought up. And right after I finished the tutorial, my entire city burned down. And I was like, well, damn. I probably could have done some light reading and probably handled that myself, but what do you want from me? This, You know, I could be like full-time or whatever, and I could go in super hard, but I'm lazy. I'm lazy. We have a lumber mill. We can turn logs into planks over there. That's pretty cool. The season is over. And so we have five babies, and we got our ten free gold by taking that god, which is pretty rad. A crafting hut is probably a good idea. A wandering witch come dancing and chanting to the edge of the village. She want king to make sacrifice so she can ask mud mother for blessing. We can sacrifice two goblins. We can throw mud at her to drive her away before she makes the god angry. She is not worshipping our god, that is true. I'll probably do that, throw mud at her. The witch speaks lies, not blessings. We throw mud at her and drive her away. Witch cower and weep as she gather up her talismans and scurry away. Damn right she does. She doesn't want to mess with the king. By the way, we need to assign a king, so let's do that in here. Uh, the most loyal of my servants, the eldest of my goblins, shall become king. And it looks like we've got a queen. So there it is. She will be Malifo Wolf, queen of our lands. Her status is being lazy. Look at that. She's being just like the gentry already. She's picked it up. It's not hard to be a noble person, but, you know... Some people don't make the connection that, like, basically you're just supposed to be rich and take other people's stuff through taxes and sleep all day. That's what it means to be, that's what it means to be a member of the noble ruling class. We don't, you know, do art, do science all day with your massive amounts of money and really just don't do anything else. Lie around, bask, smoke inside of rooms full of books. I think that's what, like, I don't know, noblemen used to do. I'm not really sure. I don't know if we're, like, medieval noblemen. We're going to be expected to ride out on somebody every now and again. We can also click on resources and designate that those be taken. Like, if you click on a tree, you can... I need that to go away. You can priority it so that they go and they get it no matter what. It's up to you. 
You can do it however you want to do it. We do need to assault haulers or assign haulers as well. So there's one. And haulers! We got haulers. They like to holler while they haul. That's why they're called haulers. Because they make a lot of noise and they move things from point A to point B. One thing they have added since the last time I played is all the little guys get uniforms now when you give them jobs. Like the queen, I think, was the only one the last time I played the game that got an outfit when you gave her a job. Everybody else just stayed normal. In this one now, they get little hats and they get little outfits. Like when you get an explorer, they've got a backpack that's covered with like glass vials and magnifying lenses and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. I really like this game and I'm excited to see what's going to come of it because they've shown pretty good attention to detail with a lot of the stuff that's inside of the title. There's a lot of things here that I, I think they've got a pretty good eye for making a game engaging and fun to play for a player. And you guys know me, I'll play anything that allows me to build a city and like manage a colony or whatever. I love colony management games from RimWorld on over to this game, on over to just any of them. I like all of them. Planet Base, I love playing city managers. I think they're super fun. I'm not particularly good at them, but I do like playing them. This is our craft hall. It's going to allow us to make tools so that they can work a little bit faster. It's going to allow us to make weapons so that they can fight a little bit more gooder. I'm going to assign one person for right now because we don't have a lot of people available who can do these jobs. I'm going to disable weapons for right now, and I'm going to leave them on tools. As you can see, the hauler already brought over both of the criteria they need in order to mash out some basic tools. We'll keep an eye on it. We only need two people that need basic tools, but as your colony grows, that's going to go up. So just keep that in mind. We have sticks. We don't really have stone. They are hauling things back and forth. So let's have a look and see what we can do next. We have a Warrens. We're going to need that once we get a little bit bigger as a culture. But for right now, not incredibly important. We've got a scavenger's hut. I would highly recommend the scavenger's hut. I think it's a good idea because then they go to these bone piles over here. And then we can make weapons for our goblins. And goblins have a right to self-defense. If something attacks goblin, goblins stab back with weapon possibly made of pointy bone from previous goblin. That's how we do this. You know, everyone gives to the great conglomerate that is our society. Taking a look around the map, this actually would have been an okay spot to start too, except for the ridiculous lack of wood. I like this area too, except that it's right next to a graveyard, which kind of sucks. That means we're going to have a lot of bad guys coming from that direction. That's one of the big things you want to do at the outset of this game. Figure out where all of your graveyards are. Uh, graveyards, they spawn bad guys that will periodically attack your city. And so before you set up watchtowers and guard towers and stuff like that, it's a good idea to fly around the map and figure out where those attacks are going to be coming from so that you can create pinch points with your towers so that nothing can get to you. I don't know if they have a way up from this side. They do right there. So we're going to need a tower over here at the top of that, and we're going to need a tower over here at the top of this little climb as well so that if anything decides to come in and mess with us, we can take care of business. What is this right here? Is that a graveyard? What is that thing? I don't even know what that is. It looks like a little pond maybe or something. Yeah, it's got a little cattail and it's got a lily pad on it. Maybe it's for fishing or something like that. Meh. We'll keep an eye on it. I'll fiddle around with it a little bit later on. Can I make another bonfire, by the way? Is that like something that I can do? For faith, I think it's a good idea... We're supposed to prioritize faith in this culture, and so I think it's a good idea to do that. We can also go, oh, it looks like they take berries and they take some other stuff and they turn it into beer. So apparently the priests are responsible just like ancient monks for making all the beer. That's pretty sweet. We've got a blacksmith to make tools and weapons. That's pretty rad. We've got a weaver right there for cloth. We've got a build mines at iron and stone nodes to get that. So is that a stone node? Like, what is that right there? Like, do these count as nodes? Or, where is iron at? I don't see iron anywhere. Hmm. Iron, where are you? That is a stone node. I would assume that we put our mine in, like, over here, and that'll do just fine for us. I don't see anything darker that looks like iron, but it's got to be around here somewhere. Hmm. Iron, where are you hiding at? Oh, there's an iron one right there. So we got some pretty big nodes over there. Is there one? It's got two big stone nodes right there, which we can use for mining. And then it looks like we actually don't have iron anywhere near our base. A smarter starting location might have been... Well, there's no wood over here, though. So that might not have worked out very well. We've also got some kind of magic lake right there, which... I'm sure one of my goblins will stick their face in it at some point and we'll learn what it does. It's only a matter of time. Do I need ten logs for that? Oh, I need logs. Okay, so let's make a wood cuttery then. In the trade menu, we can go to a woodcutter's hut, and we can just be like, plop, and we can put that right there. And now we can assign goblins to go after that thing. They'll take the sticks that we have, and they'll start logging. 
which is probably a good idea. I think that's what it does. It converts sticks to logs or something like that. What does it do? Oh, it cuts trees for logs. Okay, so you just get flat out logs. So it gives you the bare basic necessity that you need in order to farm out logs for everybody. I'm really hoping that putting the campfire under there doesn't backfire on us. If it does and they can't get there in the winter, they're all going to die of the cold. It's going to be weak. It's not just going to be kind of weak. It's going to be like shaky arms mega weak. This guy is over here, like, making some kind of suggestive motion behind that other goblin, which is apparently how construction takes place in Elderstone. You've got to sexually stimulate the other goblin until he builds something you want. Go figure. Different strokes for different folks. Let's not look down on goblin kind and goblin culture for the way that they choose to get their work orders done. As long as productivity is maintained, I don't mind either way. If you get a little bit, if you exchange some friction on the way through there, hey, congrats to you. I'm not a hater. Good for you, man. Good for you and your biological imperatives. They're bringing back more sticks on that side. I don't know if we have any berries around here. We have berries right here, which are pretty close. I think that's a good thing for us. That'll mean that we have lots and lots and lots of food in the future. The last time I started this game off, I put my base the farthest from berries you could imagine. It was really far from the nearest berries. It was a major undertaking for one of my scavengers to go over there and take care of business. That was a scavenger hut right there. Okay, sounds good to me. You guys done over here yet? You guys banging that thing out? Very nice. They got the building done. Okay. And so we have five new adults, which means we don't have enough homes for everybody. Let's go ahead, and I'm going to have two people be woodcutters. There we are. Let's focus ourselves on the building of a brand new Warrens over here so that everybody gets a house. You get a house, you get a house, they get a house, everybody gets a house. We'll put that like, how close can I get it? We'll put it right there. I like my, I want my goblin community to be tight knit. I want it all to be in like one big circle, mostly around the well in case things catch on fire. I am terrified of fire in this game. Bad things happen when fires occur and so I try to keep it from happening. You should definitely prioritize making tools. I don't know what you're doing right now, but you should take care of that. Other things that we can look at is if we click on each of the buildings. This one's got a contextual menu, so we need food, and we need houses is the main social need that they have right now. In addition, it's probably a good idea for us to go through and make sure that we make a priest or something. That seems to be something that our people respect, and so we're going to build some obelisks. We're going to get an organized religion going on right now that, of course, I will be the top of. Uh, I being the lady queen of this location, I need to be on top of that. The religion is directly linked to me and my divine right. You gotta make that apparent to all goblins. All goblins need to know, and they need to understand that. For a breakdown, they want more sticks, and so they're perfectly happy right there. Oh, if it's filled up, it's good. Okay. Tool needs are at 0%. They need cloth, and they need leather to finish that on off. We do have some people that are out there farming logs right now. You can see them bringing them back to the storage area. I think we've done a good job with the efficiency of the way that everything is laid out right now, and... I think that's going to benefit us in the future. I don't think we're going to have much to deal with right there. With Warrens, we're at 13 out of 16. My next suggestion would be that we future-proof a little bit because we do have a lot of children coming in. And so, I don't know. If I can just get one bridge right there that goes to there, I would appreciate that. Thank you. We'll build another Warrens right there. This is going to be like the living area over on this side. I think it's going to work out. Other things that we might want to consider. Watchtowers. Watchtowers are quite good, and we are going to need them. And so if we place one of these kind of on the outskirts of our village to keep an eye out for threats, like basically the outermost explorers and people on the edge of our base, it's a good plan. I'll probably put that like right there just to watch that because the enemies are going to be coming from this way. So that'll give them something to fall back to. We do have adults available right now. Uh, we have two new babies that have been born, which is great. We have six peons at the moment. They do just about everything. They'll just run around and do tasks as much as they need to do them. They are going through and building our warrens right there, which is great. Let's go ahead and speed this on up for a minute until good things start to happen, until the city starts to grow. The watchtower, we will have to assign military guards to that. So be aware, you do have to assign people to that building. Over here, we've got our walk-up right there. I'll probably just put a guard tower over, like, this area just to watch out over this edge of the base, too, because those are the two main vectors that they are going to be able to come after us from. And I'm not trying to lose early. I'm trying to be strong out here. I'm trying to be uber strong. As soon as the scavenging hut is done, 
It looks like they're working on it. As soon as the scavenging hut is done, we're at 22 right now. Good. That should hold us for at least two more seasons. We are stacking up a little bit of money, which I think is advantageous to us. It'll probably be a good idea that we set up a trade hut at some point. Once we set up the trade hut, I think you can designate jobs, and then I think you get traders or something like that. Or you can make, like, I don't know if that system's in the game yet, though. Let's go have a look. So for trade, we have a scavenger hut, a mine, blacksmith, weaver... A brewery, a butcher has not been put in yet, the workshop's not in yet, the trade post isn't in yet. So we can make a trade hall. The trade hall allows us to designate what goblins do what work so that they'll be more focused in their provisions. But other than that, that's the only reason that you really need it for right now. It'll probably become more useful later on once you have like industry set up and stuff like that that your goblins like to focus on in order to help themselves survive a little bit longer because that is the ultimate goal here. I think that the city of Gobblebrook is looking very good. I don't think we have a whole lot of things to concern ourselves with as of right now. And so they have built the Scavenger's Hut. No, they haven't. The Scavenger's Hut is not up and ready to go just yet. They are going and getting a ton of logs over there, which I think is great. Let's assign another tradesman. There we go. We've got another tradesman. I'm going to turn that back on. We're sitting on five tools right now, which is perfectly fine. As soon as this goes up, we can assign them to go get frogs. We can assign them to go get, like, bones. We can assign them to go get all kinds of stuff, and it works out great. So in the watchtower... Let's go ahead and get two goblins right there. If nothing else, I want to make sure we have a strong military. Call those insurrections before they get started and make sure that my goblins know who's boss and that I am the one protecting them. And the people that are protecting them are in my employ. I'm the one paying them money so that their loyalty is to me. That's the, that's the important part here. What is this goblin doing? Why is he laying on the ground like that? Don't lay on the ground. Just, like, do your thing. Just be cool. Be cool, man. Be cool. After this season right here, I think we should get six more goblins, I think. I, I think that's what that little meter is right there. We get six peons that will come up pretty soon. This right here is how many peons we have left. And as of right now, our workforce is a little... A little light. Could be better. I'm going to have them for right now not do frogs. Not do grain. Instead, go out and get hemp and get bones. When we bring the bones back, we can use those down here to make basic weapons to arm our soldiers, which I think is a good idea. I don't know. You're not really a soldier without a weapon, are you? Like, if you got, if you're like a barehanded soldier, you must be playing Dwarf Fortress or something like that and can't figure out the UI. Fun factoid, I had that happen when I played Dwarf Fortress the first time. I couldn't figure out how to assign weapons to people, and so all of my city guards were basically master level wrestlers, and they would just choke out enemies with crazy wrestling skills, and it was pretty rad. They bit people, they kicked people, they choked them out, they ripped their heads off with their bare hands, all that kind of stuff. Pretty terrifying dwarves! Pretty terrifying dwarves, all things considered. This game is called Goblins of Elderstone. If you want to see more, leave lots of likes down below. In addition, that is the best way for you to support the channel, is just to like videos. It helps me keep the channel going, and it exposes me to more people so that we continue to grow. Aside from that, if you wanted to join me live and play some of the games that I play here on the channel, I finished Subnautica on stream, for example. You can do that. All you have to do to do that is go over to Twitch TV slash Splattercat Gaming and have yourself a seat and throw a follow. And I'll be up every single day from 2 o'clock till 5 o'clock Pacific time in the afternoon. Hi to everybody. It's been a blast. If you wanted to get this game for yourself, I got a link for you down below in the description, as I always do. And I will see you when next we meet. Hi to everybody. Take care out there.